The gods of the Supreme Court, that is the topic of tonight's byline. It's fascinating to watch the progressives up on Parliament Hill lose their collectivist little minds when their pet comes under scrutiny. I'm talking about criticism of the Supreme Court and Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin. The opposition and media working once again as one, well, they've been foaming at the mouth over Prime Minister Stephen Harper's refusal to take a phone call from the Chief Justice. During the lead-up to the appointment of Mark Nadon to the Supreme Court, Chief Justice McLaughlin called both Justice Minister McKay and the Chief of Staff to Prime Minister Harper to set up a time and discuss what she saw as issues with Nadon's appointment. See, Nadon wasn't appointed yet, but he was on the short list. McLaughlin knew that. She wanted to talk to Harper about this, and so she, or her office, called to set up the chat. The chat didn't happen, but she did try. Now, asked about this at a news conference after media reports about the calls last week, the PM said it would have been wrong to talk to the country's top judge. If people thought or if people thought that the prime minister or other ministers of the government were consulting judges on cases before them or even worse, consulting judges on cases that might come before them before the judges themselves had the opportunity to hear the appropriate evidence, I think the entire opposition entire uh, media and entire legal community would be outraged. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what is driving the media opposition complex crazy right now. The fact that Stephen Harper said that Chief Justice McLaughlin acted inappropriately, that he didn't simply genuflect before the highest court in Canada, that he dared to speak his mind. I think, I think that, that we get to the point where an opposition leader would have to stand up and ask the Prime Minister to formally withdraw uh, unfounded and unjust personal attacks against the Supreme Court of Canada, against the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, it really says a lot about the state of this government's approach on our uh, democracy and our institutions. Personal attack? It's not like you called her a useless get. I did that, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, here's what Tom Mulcair had to say. He says, it's an incredible situation. It's a unique, unprecedented situation to have a prime minister and a justice minister taking pot shots at the highest court in the land. We've never seen anything like that. Really? It's that bad, folks? Look, Thomas Mulcair claims to be Catholic. So does Justin Trudeau. You might be saying, what does that have to do with their position on the court? Well, the Catholic Church teaches that on matters of faith or morals, then official teachings of the Pope, rulings you might call them, well, they're infallible. But if you look at what both leaders support, they really don't believe in the infallibility of the Pope or the Church that they claim to belong to. But they do believe in infallibility, the infallibility of judges. And no criticism is acceptable. Stephen Harper saying the Chief Justice, Justice acted inappropriately in trying to involve him in a conversation about, well, a case that might come before the court, that's enough for Mulcair to demand an apology in the Commons. Eleven former presidents of the Canadian Bar Association have just written an open letter in which they say that the Prime Minister's disrespect for the Supreme Court harms the very workings of our constitutional system of government. It's also unprecedented. Will the Prime Minister apologize to the Chief Justice and to Canadians for this unprecedented and indeed inexplicable attack on one of our most respected democratic institutions, the Supreme Court? Now, Harper didn't apologize and neither should he, but I did apologize to the Chief Justice on Twitter. I said, that I'm sorry she's a useless git. Actually, I had a typo in the tweet and it said, in a useless git. See, I'm not infallible and nor do I think I am. But calling the Chief Justice a useless git on Twitter saw plenty more people lose their collectivist minds. Post-media columnist Stephen Marr pointed out that due to the charter and a 1980s court decision, I could actually criticize the Chief Justice. Before R versus Capito, I think a personal attack like that might have been considered scandalizing the court, a form of contempt. Good, I hold them in contempt, and what he says is true. But the court of the, the 1980s is a far cry from what we have now. Plenty of others, while they replied that I was a useless git, or worse, several claimed I hate democracy or the charter. But when I challenged these people on whether they've read some of the truly rotten decisions to come out of this court, I didn't see anyone say yes. Even Marr admitted that he doesn't read many decisions. I do. Last year in the Whatcott decision, the court said truth is no defense from that decision. 
I do not think it is inconsistent with these views to find that not all truthful statements must be free from restriction. Truthful statements can be interlaced with harmful ones or otherwise presented in a manner that would meet the definition of hate speech. Truth is no defense. <sighs> That's unreal. Now, I've been critical of the courts for years. Back in 2009, I wrote about a decision involving parents from Quebec that wanted their kids to go to school in English. The court ruled that while stopping these parents from doing so was a violation of their charter rights, well, it was allowed because of the social good brought about by the Charter of the French Language. In the Levine decision, they ruled that forcing union members to pay dues that were then given to political parties was a violation of the right to freedom of association. But they said unions play an important role in society, so the individual right to freedom of association must come second. 2012, the Supreme Court ruled that Muslim women can testify in court with veils over their faces, denying the accused the right to face their opponent, their accuser, in an open court. In 2011, the court ruled that while well, they accepted race-based settlements in the Cunningham decision, saying that because the intent was to make everything better, well, it was okay. Then there's the Nadon decision itself, where the court, including the less than impartial Beverly McLaughlin, ruled on who could join the court. The court said, well, one part of this rule applies to Quebec, but the other part of the rule doesn't, and they twisted themselves into pretzels and got the ruling they wanted all along. You can read the whole thing, and you will see there's no logic. Now, I don't know about Stephen Harper, but when I criticize the court, when I call the Chief Justice a useless git, I do it from a position of having actually read the crappy decisions, the ones that rip up the fundamental freedoms the beloved charter is supposed to guarantee, and the judges are supposed to uphold. Look, folks, we need to realize that Canada's judges are not impartial observers. They are politicians in robes, politicians that we cannot elect, cannot remove from office. The media opposition complex wants us all to genuflect before them. But I say no, I bow to no man and no woman. And that includes Stephen Harper. Because plenty of people are quick to point out that Harper's appointed most of the judges sitting on the court. So why am I criticizing him? Well, they're right about that. He has appointed most of them. And I've been saying for years he's been doing a piss poor job of it. I begged one of his appointments, Justice Rothstein, to retire after he wrote the Whatcott decision. And Wagner, a more recent appointment, never should have gotten the job. As an appeals court judge, he ruled that the government has the power to tell a private religious school what they must teach in matters of faith. The rights guaranteed in the Charter, the real rights, the ones up top, they predate Trudeau's Charter. And they are vitally important. The court should be protecting them. But the judge sitting in the robes up on that bench, shred them on a regular basis. And until they stop doing that, I will kill them all useless gits and I will hold them all in contempt. And that's the byline.